start the meeting whenever you're ready. Oh, I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6.01 on uh, January 25th, 2021. Um, I believe the next agenda item is roll call. Is that correct? That is. Um, let me pull up the agenda here real quick. Actually, we'll do that in a second. Um, all right. So com committee member, um, let's see, what is our alphabet? Sendri DeMatthew. Okay. And please um, unmute yourselves I, so we can hear the here, please, for the roll call. Um, uh, committee member Kenny. I'm here. Committee member Lex Siegel. Here. Committee member Winkelstein. Here. All right, give me a second, Naomi. I'll bring up the agenda for you real quick. All right, can everybody see that okay? Yes, I can. Ah, okay. Um, okay, it, it looks like uh, introductions. Should we all introduce ourselves? I'm Naomi Siegel, I'm the chair of person of the meeting tonight. I've uh, been on this committee since its inception and that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Julie? Um, I'm Julie Winkelstein, and I don't know if when I used to meet with you guys, if that was the same committee. Um, is it, so I've been on it before, but it was a thousand years ago. Um, so I'm glad to be here. Hi, I'm Sandrine, and I'm brand new. So thank you for having me here. And um, I'm, um, is that all we're sharing? I think. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Jack Kenny. I'm the uh, current vice chair of the committee. And like Naomi, I've been on this committee for a long time since we started before it was an official committee. It was an ad hoc committee. And I think that's when Julie, you were connected with us. And um, so, and I'm uh, here to take charge of uh, continuing the committee's work. Not take charge, but <laughs> be part of it. And um, I'm Jeremy Allen. I'm the City of Albany's um, Media and Communications uh, Administrator. I've been with the city since 2000, and I run our public access TV station, KALB. And I'm usually the one who's behind the scenes uh, on all of these on all of these um, Zoom meetings that uh, we are broadcasting live to YouTube and to our television station, KALB. Okay, it looks like the next item is approval of the minutes. Um, do we have the minutes? Did we yes. all see them? Would you like me to bring that up so everybody can take a look? Yeah. No, good. Can everybody see that okay? Yes. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, have, yeah. I, have, I have two corrections to the minutes, which I did, but I realized uh, I had a grammatical error in section 5.3. Um, the fiber connectivity issues 
have been corrected, not has been. And, uh, and then uh, I didn't realize there was a page three, which said that our next meeting was gonna be October 28th of 2019. So uh, that should be added at the end of the, uh, just before we adjourned that we decided our next meeting date. Okay, I've got that. All right, someone want to move to approve the minutes? I move to I will move to approve. Second. A second. Okay, uh, roll call. Um, committee member DeMatthew. This is where we get an, uh, a yes or an aye. Okay, uh, committee member uh, Lux Eagle. For me, can you repeat her uh, uh, vote since we can't hear her? Okay, um, that was a yes from committee member DeMatthew. Um, committee member Lux Siegel? Yeah. Yes. Committee member Kenny? Yes. Committee member Winkelstein? Yes. The, okay. the, so the minutes are approved. All right. Yeah. And the next item is uh, public comment. Do we have uh, members of the public who would like to speak? Yes, we do. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeremiah. Thank you, Anne. I uh, just want to introduce myself. My name is Jeremiah Garrett Pinguello. I graduated Albany High School in uh, 2001. Proud member of the Portable High. I graduated Albany High School with an overall GPA of 3.73. I went to Long Beach State. Um, I was a quarterback for the Albany High School football team for four years. I wrestled and I uh, played baseball also. I'm currently a longshoreman at the Port of Oakland um, and a productive citizen of Albany. Um, yeah, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, I've kind of noticed that the big bellies on Solano Avenue are kind of unused and it's kind of where I've been posting public notices for these type of meetings. I was really busy today uh, gathering food for the unhoused uh, before the rain starts. So I, I, my bad, I was unable to post for the meeting tonight, but I think um, with this committee, we could figure out a way, you know, Julie and, um, Jeremy, if we could figure out a way to post these sort of meetings to the public, at least on the kiosk on Curtis and uh, Solano. Um, I've been posting these meetings at Gordo's on the bulletin board at Gordo's. Um, it's kind of a hot spot, right? And also the big bellies outside the post office and things like that. So this committee is called... Uh, community community media access i'm just wondering you know how it's accessible by the community you know how does a community access these sort of things um i know we're still working on some outreach to have more public notices nobody goes to the city hall anymore um it's closed so i mean posting things up at that bulletin board in the parking lot is kind of uh, out of the way most people are on Solano. Gosh, these three minutes sure go by fast. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to do what I can as a, a citizen of the community. Um, if for some reason I'm not appointed by the school board to be the seventh chair on the SEJC committee, if there's any more room on this committee, I think I will want to apply because this one seems like a really fun committee to be on. And I don't know. I think I would be great with uh, working with you, Jeremy, you've done a great job. I see you all over Albany all the time. Um, and so, yeah, if there's any phone numbers or ways for people to um, reach out to you guys, can you just let everybody know on this meeting? So that way the public can figure out how to get a commercial on the Albany channel. Um, last thing I want to say is a member of Albany high school. Her name's Ashley. She wrote a book and it's being published. And I was just trying to give a shout out for her, for her book, maybe being posted on the city's 
um, Albany KLB. Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. The time is up. Perfect. All right, thank you. Okay, is there anyone else present? In, in, I'm not no. I'm seeing anybody else. Okay. Point of order, Madam Chair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, for the benefit of our other committee members, uh, we usually at every meeting decide who among us is going to take the minutes for, the, for that meeting uh, and then produce them before the next time we meet. So oh, we should, we should you do are that correct. Tonight. Yeah. All right. I, I can volunteer to do that if you'd like. Okay. It is fine with me. Thank okay. you. Pat. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think I, that's not it. Announcements. Are Thank you. Thank you. Okay, announcements. Are there any announcements, staff? Staff announcements? I don't have any. Um, no announcements. That, well, actually, here. Yeah, I actually can um, do um, some brief announcements about um, since we, it's, it's been um, a number of months, um, <laughs> 18 months since our last meeting, approximately. So there are a few announcements that I can they can talk about about what KLB has been doing. Um, we um, through um, through the pandemic, we have shifted most of our operations, obviously, to online streaming. And so for this last year, we have successfully moved all of our public meetings into a virtual space. And that has been uh, one of the, the primary things that I've been involved with um, in taking all of our committees, commissions, and city council, and, um, and the school board uh, onto Zoom, to the Zoom webinar platform. Um, we are also... Um, quite involved in the city newsletter. So a big part of what we've been doing recently is communications uh, for the city uh, through the newsletter, through the website, um, through um, social media, and, um, and obviously here. Um, the one thing that we haven't been able to do since um, obviously many um, of us are working from home primarily. Um, our television and broadcast pro production has come home with me. So in the background of my screenshot, you can see a little bit of our live broadcast that is um, going out to YouTube right now. We're hoping to, within um, the next month or so, be able to um, um, bring back some programming of KLB or of our public meetings and add them to channel 33. Um, for those of you who don't know, we have a public access TV channel, um, channel 33, which um, broadcasts on Comcast and AT&T UVerse um, and has been streaming live on our website um, since 2017. Um, right now, it's primarily bulletin board, um, slides, and some um, uh, regular daily programming from Free Speech TV, Democracy Now! We, we run uh, twice a day. Um, but we hope to um, shortly, a um, uh, little, little bit of background, all of our meetings are recorded live and streamed live. So there's a physical, um, I have to be on site in order to um, upload video files for our broadcast if we're not streaming directly um, or sending sending our video out directly to Comcast. So I plan in this next month or so to um, start taking these video files and, and uploading them to our um, to our channel for playback on on Comcast, which I'm uh, hoping to do probably within the next couple of weeks. Um, also, I can give you a brief update on um, Film Fest. Um, and maybe I can get a little bit of help from our committee members, is that we canceled our 10th year anniversary in-person um, Film Fest event back in April at the beginning, um, or back March, March, in the beginning of the, the pandemic, and very quickly pivoted to a virtual um, uh, film festival, which was quite successful, charming, and fun. Um, it was one of the first iterations of um, 
virtual pro replacing physical in-person programming with virtual and we had a good time it was fun you know by all accounts um and we are looking forward to coming back with some virtual programming hopefully later this year after council is able to weigh in on how how we bring back um any of our programs that have been canceled due to the pandemic. Um, Naomi, Jack, would you like to talk a little bit about what we've been doing for Film Fest in the, um, over these last uh, few months? Yeah, Film Fest, um, while we haven't had a virtual film, we had a virtual Film Fest and we're still in planning stages, as Jeremy said, for next year's virtual Film Fest, um, hopefully, you know, that will happen fairly soon. But um, in the meantime, we have been running monthly programs. Our last one was the Martin Luther King Commit to Serve series of films. And that we did get the nice feedback on that. Um, and we will be putting up more films in February. In March, we're gonna be partnering with the library um, as we, used to do live at the library for our Albany Film Fest Presents. Um, we're gonna be showing, I believe two films and there'll be more information on that uh, in a few weeks. That information is um, through the Albany Film Fest newsletter and I believe it will also be on the uh, library site and on the city news and on social media, so should be easy to find. That's that's all I have for um, for staff updates at this point. Jack? You're Jack, muted. You're mute. Unmute. You're muted. Okay, how's that? Good. Can you hear me? All right. Just to continue on the Film Fest report is that um, the Film Fest uh, organizing team has been meeting off and on, mostly, uh, I think almost all virtually actually, actually uh, to talk about the state of things. Usually uh, in a typical year, we would have uh, had a request for submissions and um, we would be reviewing those, getting ready for the Film Fest in March. But uh, we don't know when, like Jeremy is saying, when the Film Fest will occur in 2021. We're still waiting for guidance on that. So uh, uh, we haven't opened for any submissions at this point. Uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll get word on that soon. Uh, the other thing we talked about um, on the Film Fest side was uh, we wanted to dedicate a new award for filmmakers, uh, the Joseph McCord Award. Uh, to honor films that feature uh, themes of racial and social justice. Um, and Joe was a good friend of the Film Fest. He passed away last year, and this is to honor him. And we're hoping to bring that forward at some point this year. Um, so that's all I had to say about Film Fest at this point. Right. All right. Thank you. Um, next agenda item. Thanks. All right, presentations. I don't, we, do we have presentations, Jeremy? We don't have any presentations tonight. Um, right. Next item would be six. All right, uh, discussion and possible action on matters related to the following items. Six dash one is election of officers. All right, we need to uh, elect a new chair and vice chair for 2021. So does anyone have a nomination for chairman, for chairperson? So just before you, you do that, just a refresher, if you don't already know, um, you can make nominations for chair and then following the vice chair, um, you nominate, you do not need a second. You can nominate yourself and the vote will be taken. The last nomination will be voted on first. All right. And once you reach a majority, then the yeah, process stops there. Okay. 
Nominations are open for chair. Um, I would like to nominate Julie. I'll second that nominate. Oh, don't I don't have to second it. <laughs> um, Any okay. other nominations? Thank you. If right. not, then Jeremy, if you can do a roll call vote. Okay. Um, the this, this point of order is Julia willing <laughs> to take the uh, the position. You just have to unmute, please. Yeah. Um, the host muted me. How dare the host <laughs> mute me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm willing to try it. I, yeah, with help. It, sure. Why not? Okay. With that, um, we'll take a roll call. Um, committee member DeMethew, please unmute and and I, or yes. Yes. Committee member Lux Siegel. Yes. Committee member Kenny? Yes. Committee member Winkelstein? Yes. Okay. That passes. Congratulations. Wait, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Julie will help. take the floor and uh, I guess open up nomination for vice chair. Okay. Um, I'd like to open up nominations for vice chair. Oh, oh I made that. Quote. I thought somebody tried to mute me again. Um, <laughs> All these messages that pop up on this. <laughs> this is the one that says co-host. Um, nominations for for vice chair. Can I nominate also? Yes, I can. Okay, I nominate. Yeah. Um, I, I. Um, what's the word? I. Anyway, um, I would like to nominate committee member De Matthew as vice chair. Any other nominations? No. Okay, I'll do, um, let me do a roll call. Um, for vice chair, um, the nominee DeMatthew, um, committee member DeMatthew, how say you? <laughs> um, similarly, I will try my best, so yes. Thank Very you. well. Uh, committee member Lux Siegel. Yes. Committee member Kenny. Aye. Committee member Winkelstein. Aye. Okay, thank you. New chair and vice chair, welcome both of you. Congratulations to both of you. And I'm here to help, I'm sure Naomi is too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, the next, uh, the next item on the agenda is 6-2, which is review of commission work plan. And uh, we're supposed to look at it and discuss the accomplishments. Are you gonna put the work plan up? Yeah, I'll, I'll put the work plan up so we can take a look at it. I was reviewing it a bit today and um, we've, you know, it, it, despite the pandemic, we've actually, you know, um, still completed, you know, much of what was on there. Let me bring it up. And I think what we, if the chair is okay with it, we can just go through a point by point, um, have whatever, you know, discussion and the chair can just, you know, let me know when to uh, advance or, you know, if you need any background information on any of this. So let me bring this up real quick. All right, can everybody see that? Yes. What's the thing on the right? On the right, let's see. Oh, if we Tell might it's your broadcast studio. Oh. Can we see that? You're back to the No. Oh, much better. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you, Jeremy. Got it. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So here we're looking at the 2019-2021 work plan. Um, has everybody gotten a chance to to read this, uh, take a look at it on your own? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Chair Winkelstein, if you just want to let me know what section you want to start at, um, maybe we can look at, um, would you like me to just read aloud the background and the, the purpose? Would that be helpful? Yeah, I, th I think so. Is, are the, the work plan is to see what exists now 
Correct. We can all, we, this is 20, up until 2021. So we're going to be creating a new work plan. Is that? Yeah. Uh, th this work plan goes until um, uh, July. Um, we finalized and presented this. This is one of the last things that the committee did um, before, um, before a couple of meetings where we did not have a quorum in it order to meet and before the pandemic. Um, so we've, We've continued with much of uh, this, this work plan, but that was for 2019, 2021. So the background here is um, the work plan includes items identified as priority projects within the city council's strategic plan. The Albany Community Access Committee shall review the work plan each year in January to identify accomplishments and ensure continued focus on completing work plan items. Work plans are presented to the council every two years, and if a change is needed to the work plan outside of that schedule, the Community Media Access Committee shall submit a request for amendment to advisory body work plan form for review by the city council. Um, the CMAC purpose advises the city council on issues related to the development and operation of KALB. Albany's public educational and government PEG access channel, as well as a variety of media support for the city of Albany. In 2018, the committee modified its schedule to quarterly meetings in January, April, July, and October. Um, so initiatives and accomplishments. Um, uh, the first is Albany Film Fest uh, in its ninth year, offered a full week of free film screenings. Um, do you want me to read, just keep reading through this for you, uh, just out loud? Yeah. I think I, I mean, I think we can all read it. So, okay. um, but maybe just the, um, give us time to do that. And then the, just the, t the first line, I don't know yeah. what other people, um, it, I mean, obviously the film festival, there's a lot of information about it. There's a lot of information about the film, the film fest. It's not specifically a committee, event, a committee event, but it originated within the, the scope of the committee as a means to, um, to engage the Albany community in creating um, relevant content that could be used for um, our cable station. Jack, you know, maybe you would want to talk a little bit about the background of how kind of what that relationship is between um, Film Fest and Community Media Access or Naomi for the ad hoc committee where, where this came from and kind of what we're doing now with Film Fest in relationship to CMAC. Well, we have a... Um... We have a subcommittee of CMAC, the Film Fest subcommittee, and um, that that is the committee that is connected with other volunteers who are not on CMAC, who help develop the festival, uh, put together the program, screen the films, uh, do all the um, promotion and that that type of event, that type of work, uh, and then we report back to CMAC on what we're doing. Um, the city is one of the main sponsors of the Film Fest. Um, and so we work with them plus uh, other community organizations and businesses as sponsors to uh, put on the Film Fest. So it's a, a coordinated effort. Um, so we maintain a connection to CMAC by reporting at the CMAC meetings about what's going on with Film Fest and um, get feedback. Unless Naomi have anything else I'm gonna say. So the subcommittee is made up of the subcommittee works with volunteers, but the subcommittee itself is two members from CMAC. You know, I'll um, let me clarify that the what has changed over over the years is Jack. It is not officially a subcommittee anymore. Um, CMAC members are volunteers um, with the city's Film Fest event. Just to to, to, to clarify, okay. so the city the city runs the event, and CMAC members are volunteers, um, and we're looking into different ways to kind of enhance that. Um, and that'll be something that Film Fest looks at, it, like a Friends of Albany Film Fest. That's been one of the things that's, that that has been challenging, moving from something that originated kind of within the scope of the committee, and since the city doesn't do committee uh, events per se. Um, um, being able to make that clear distinction. Okay, that helps. Yeah, we started as a subcommittee, but then it, like Jeremy says, it has evolved and it still is evolving. Actually, that's one of the things that we need to do is to plan for the future structure of the Film Fest and 
uh, how that's accomplished. Right. Yeah, because I know that it come up at other commission meetings, the sort of the combination of volunteers and, and committee members seems to be, I don't know, there have been some questions about volunteers working in, with other commissions. That's why I was confused about it. Yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a challenge. Um, that's been one of the things that we've experienced here in CMAC is that there, there's a lot of production in terms of video media production and, and collaborative events such as a film festival, it requires a lot of people to do a lot of different things. And that is something that is not always conducive with um, uh, official public meetings where we have to comply with the Brown Act. So um, that's so to avoid those types of um, situations, we any anything that we're doing with the Film Fest if it's going to have more, more, um, and, and, and to a city clerk, maybe you can help me for, for a moment to describe that distinction between advisory bodies, um, and, uh, the Brown Act. So there's a little bit of clarification from the city attorney. This, this last couple of weeks, so we've been trying to get clarification because I think this issue is raised not just with this committee, but other advisory body too. So if you have a subcommittee of um, members of an advisory body and you add community members um, to this subcommittee, then this, uh, this group now become subject to the Brown Act. Doesn't matter how many people's in the subcommittee. So I hmm. think what Jeremy's trying to say is now the CMAC is not, um, so, so it's sort of like the Albany Film Fest is the, the event. And you guys, if like, for example, Jack and Naomi helps out, they're not helping out as CMAC members. They're just like all the other members of the public. They're volunteers to Albany Film Fest. That's correct. Thank you. Anne. Otherwise, if it's a subcommittee of um, um, member uh, Lux Siegel and uh, Kenny, then we add all these other uh, volunteers from Albany Film Fest. Well, this. Anytime when they meet, it's subject to the Brown Act. So there's a di difference there. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, thank you. Because I, I know that that came up at another, I think it was SEJC, um, it came up and there was, it seemed to be such a confusing issue in terms of trying to work with people in the community who are really interested in helping with the work, but they weren't allowed to do it without falling into the Brown Act problem. So exactly. Yeah, yeah so, so I see, okay. Thank you. So in um, going through the rest of um, what Film Fest is doing here, let me bring that back up. Um, and while Jeremy's bringing that up, just to remind you guys, um, each, each of the agenda item should um, be kind of like in the format of first the item is presented, then if there's questions from the committee member to the staff, then um, the chair, please open it up for public comment. There's none, or if, you know, after public comment, then you bring it back for discussion. So and then, you know, all the votes are roll call votes. So when you, when you say that is, um, it, each item is like what Jeremy's looking at right now um, is the recent, recent initiatives and accomplishments, would you say that's an agenda item or is the entire work plan an agenda item? The, the entire work plan is entire an work agenda plan. item. Okay, great. It's, it's right. the agenda item on the agenda, not on the work plan. Okay, got it. All right, great, thank you. You go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, so the, you know, as you can see in the work plan, and the work plan is available on the city's website, um, both um, uh, on at the, uh, the the, under boards and commissions, under CMAC, you can see a copy of the most recent um, uh, work plan. Um, just going through, there's a number of 
um, accomplishments um, to Film Fest. Um, but kind of in a nutshell, we've been growing for the last 10 years and, and we had, um, you know, we're having in the in the range of 800 to 1000 people coming through for, for a, a series of events growing from a one day event at the community center to multi day events at the Albany twin. Um, what the future for in person events, you know, we all know that that's going to be a challenge going forward. Um, we don't know what the status will be at the Albany twin. But when whenever that is possible to do it in person, again, that is our goal. Um, and it is also um, our our plan for the time being is to to do another virtual um, event um, in lieu of an in-person event for the 11th annual. Um, but the the time and the um, kind of the trajectory of when that will happen is yet to be determined. Um, but all in all, uh, we've been really excited about the the way that the Film Fest has kind of created. Um, uh, it's kind of developed into a downtown Albany type event and we would like to bring in local business. We'd like to find ways for um, more of the community to be involved, especially submissions from uh, youth in Albany or Albany residents. We've, there's, a, there's a lot of creative people here in the Albany area and the Bay Area at large. And we um, and Naomi and Jack could probably speak to the recognition that we've been getting as a filmmakers film festival. Um, and we're fairly highly regarded. People are surprised at the quality of the films that at this little festival that we're doing and where it's grown um, from in the last 10 years. Um, I don't know if Jack or Naomi have anything more to add, you know, as we talk about Film Fest. Um, uh, but I could go on or I could answer any questions, perhaps as we go through this work plan, you know, as we do this discussion, since there's a lot of information there, maybe I can answer questions as we go through or just pause me anytime or if you have anything to add. Could you clarify, are, are the, is the Film Fest free? No, the, the, film, the film Fest is a ticketed event, um, but what we, what we do is... Um, uh, we we charge admission. Um, t tickets usually um, are between eight dollars and twelve dollars. And typical um, uh, ticket prices for the Albany Twin, um, but we do offer a number of free events throughout the year um, in conjunction with the Albany Library. Um, uh, we've had a really good partnership over the last several years um, by doing. Um, film screenings in the Edith Stone Room of the Albany Library. And, um, and we've, we've done a number of uh, workshops, filmmaker talks, um, screenings, um, youth oriented events, digital media events, um, um, with participants uh, of in, filmmakers from the, the from the film festival, um, we've been offering or co -off offering classes through the recreation department in digital filmmaking. So there's a number of things that we've done to connect with the community using people who have participated in film fest events over the years. And for the virtual one, was that free? That, that was, was yeah, free. That was free. Yeah. Right. And our monthly events are free. Uh, Question. Uh, uh, member Kenny. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So Jeremy, as you're going through the accomplishments, uh, should we also be adding to that things that did happen since this was written? Uh, like the 2020 uh, festival was virtual, we held it. Uh, are we gonna put in things like that? Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, when we, um, this is, I think what the agenda item is to, to review and discuss this and then I think we'll make notes at probably at our next meeting we will create the new work plan and make the modifications but I will make note to um, update the virtual okay because we could make some statement I think Naomi should chime in too is that we are trying to do more outreach to filmmakers as part of the the way that the film festival is going is to encourage more uh, filmmakers, local filmmakers to be submitting and to be part of the presentations and uh, 
we're trying to come up with little perks to uh, uh, get filmmakers interested in being part of the Albany Film Fest, as a, as a, because that's one of the uh, uh, draws that we've found of the Film Fest is that having the filmmaker present and doing question and answer about their films, uh, the audience really uh, loves ha having that as a, one of the things they can do at the Film Fest. Uh, to add, sort of um, take off of that, Jeremy, when you said that there's the community, um, that they, there's classes on make, digital filmmaking, are those classes, are, do you charge for those classes? Our, our plan was to do, we've done only free, um, I think, well, no, we've done a combination of free classes and then pay for classes through the recreation department. Um, one, of, one of the examples that, that I can give is um, um, Mason, Mason's last name, Naomi, um, do you remember? I mean, one of our one of one of our filmmakers who does youth films, he has been brought on as an instructor with the recreation department and has offers his own set of classes. Um, and we have used him to do free workshops uh, in addition to the pay for classes that he offers on a regular basis at the community center. We would like to expand that and connect with more of the local filmmakers and either and present the options for pay for classes or like, you know, we're talking, you know, um, over these years of expanding the free offerings um, to the community, especially as it relates to storytelling um, and what you can do with little or no equipment, because that seems like that's the reality at this point. And that's where it connects with KLB and community media is that we want to be able to, there's a lot of the, the, what has changed in the last five to 10 years um, is that you can do a lot more on your phone than you could have ever done before. Um, we, with, um, we'll talk a little bit about this um, as I go through the rest of the, the work plan, but typically um, uh, public um, PEG channels or the, the nonprofits that support PEG channels would have a, an equipment library or a studio. We're a small city, we, have, we don't really have the staff or the infrastructure to be able to do that. Um, so being able to teach people to work with what they have rather than lending equipment or checking out equipment or offering studio or classroom facilities is something that, that we've, um, over the course of CMAX evolution in these probably these last 10 years is really diving into what we can do to share skills and share, um, uh, share techniques and, and best practices on what you can do with the things that are easily available to you and that doesn't cost a lot of money. Naomi? Yeah, I would just um, wanted to point out that one of the original impetus for the film festival was to get community members in, excited about creating their own content um, and then having it shown on KALB. That was the original impetus and it became a film festival. But I think now with everyone understanding what digital content really is and how we can communicate virtually, this is probably a good time for the committee to really fulfill some of those original goals, bringing the community together and letting people express their voices. Yeah, it seems like a, a great opportunity. That, and so the part of the free is, is the editing part of it, how to... How to well, if, if we if we go through <laughs> content creation, there's that's that's the challenge, you know, like it, it's 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 a lot of hours to create, you know, a very small final product. Um, and uh, we, we, I'm sure um, uh, any of our current or previous um, CMAC members can attest that it just it takes a long time. Once you once you think through what you want to do, um, come up with the idea. Um, actually film it is the, that is the shortest amount of time that you are going to spend on that particular project. Then there's the editing, um, audio, graphics, titling, um, exporting, uploading, programming, and, and, um, and sharing. There's, there's a number of steps in the process and that's all time consuming. And, and a production um, typically will, you know, that you can do a lot by yourself, but, you know, bringing in, you know, lighting and audio and actors and presenters and hosts and having the studio space, you know, that you can get, it gets complicated pretty quick. Uh, 
So what we've been able to do in our pared down version of public access is figure out how to share the information so people can connect on their own, do it on their own, and then bring us a finished product. And then so sharing the information is where we see kind of like the best, um, the best way forward um, for working with the community. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. Okay. Are there any other questions about Film Fest before I move on to our cable cast? Okay. All right. So we are, our cable cast, there's a lot of ongoing issues, um, our ongoing um, items here. Um, we currently um, are uh, live streaming now um, all of our public meetings, um, in addition to the school boards. Uh, meeting and, and special meetings, um, commissions, committees, and um, some, uh, we haven't been doing many special events in the way that we've done in the past, like music in the park or dinner with Albany. Sometimes we would, you know, or a Solano stroll, we would send out somebody to do some, some sort of, you know, audio visual event in, um, in, in some of our public recreation events, but we have, um, been kind of the technical backbone for a number of um, listening sessions over over the last year. Um, some special events um, on online. Obviously, the Film Fest um, was uh, was one of those. So, um, our live streaming and archiving of all of our meetings that's that's ongoing. Um, we've we've are even doing a number of PSAs. Um, for city messaging, uh, most recently with um, the mayor statement on commitment, commit to serve. Um, a lot of what we've been doing is compiling cell phone videos and re-editing them with some city branding to be able to share messaging with the city. So that's an ongoing uh, issue. Our bulletin board, we run 24 seven on our channel and cut to other programming, satellite programming. So um, since we're not in person on our at all of our facilities, the, the facilities aren't open to the public. We do have a bulletin board that runs with um, up-to-date committee, commission, news, calendar items that show on our on our TV station. But that's also a, a digital signage feed that we um, do at the senior center, at the community center, and at um, City Hall. So one of the things, and that's kind of, you know, public viewing of what's happening uh, here in Albany. Since nobody is inside of those buildings from the public, we haven't been using those. But you can see that bulletin board content on our, on our TV broadcast channel. Um, we also maintain the audiovisual in infrastructure for all of the facilities around town for, um, for the city. Um, just when COVID happened, I spent about um, probably a good portion of that first month outfitting the emergency operations center with, you know, up to date kind of Zoom teleconferencing type of information so that we could go. Um, so anybody who was working within within that space, it was, it was still undetermined how we were going to um, do all of our virtual connections um, uh, once we were sheltering in place. Um, that was a big part of the, you know, March and April. Um, I can also mention too that um, just looking looking in here, um, we also have. Sorry, I'm getting some blinking lights. Sorry. All right. Um, the and then in um, and then 20, 2017, we upgraded our web stream to HD, so we went from standard definition to high definition for our city meetings. Um, uh, unfortunately, Comcast is still broadcasting all of our high definition content in standard definition. So essentially, we send a very high quality video signal all around to our, our live stream and to our um, in-person monitors around the building. And then when we send it to Comcast, it gets downgraded to, um, to uh, standard definition. And then on your high definition 4K screen at home, it gets blown out and over pixelated. So the actual <laughs> broadcast look of KALB 
is um, diminished <laughs> once it gets to the to the home. But really, over these last last few years, the kind of the shift in focus has been to more online content cre creation and live streaming. Um, the the actual television, while we keep everything on our television station, that's not necessarily where everybody is watching it. Um, as we've seen. Um, in over these last several years is that subscriptions to Comcast cable television service have declined uh, year by year. Um, and that is one of the main uh, funding sources for, um, for PEG. We receive um, um, PEG fees paid directly to the city to support this endeavor. And that is, is going down year by year as people jump off of cable TV and look um, to get their content uh, online. Any questions about our cable cast? I do have a question. So everything that's on, that's on the KLB um, through Comcast is available streaming. Every, it's, not, Correct. Not, it's not limited. In any way, it's all for there. all for all of the public meetings. Yes, we do carry um, some. Uh, we carry content from Free Speech TV. They provide that free to cities. Um, so democracy. So long as you um, uh, show democracy now on a regular basis, and so we do that twice a day. Um, but then we have access to all. Of, we can cut to all of the other programming that Free Speech TV offers. Um, we've done NASA programming um, in the middle of the night. There's a few other talk shows that were popular um, uh, that we that we've shared, and some other talks um, and stuff from. There's a university channel that we we have access to that programming. So. And you're saying that those things are not streaming. Those are not those. They're they're not streamed live. They're streamed. There's two things we 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 have a TV channel that plays 24 seven, and then we take a duplicate live feed of that and then feature that on our website. So those people who do not have um, a television subscription service can watch the live feed um, on our website. However, that does not have any on demand features or. You know, you can't roll it back. It's just the actual live feed of our cable TV channel. Much of that content that is broadcast from Free Speech TV is available on their own platforms or on their own website. So you can, you know, most most people could, you know, access that if they have, you know, connection to the internet. Um, all of our public meetings are are live streamed and archived on our YouTube channel. Um, in addition to playing on our um, playing live on our TV station, but that has not been happening for the duration of the pandemic because I need to be in it there on site in order to make that happen with the actual video files. And I'm here working remotely in Oakland. Okay, great. Thank you for explaining that. Okay, um, going on, um, we maintain this li live stream. Um, in fact, we're streaming live to YouTube right now and we have three viewers. Um, <laughs> Um, we have an ongoing um, partnership with the Albany Library. Um, obviously, that has changed since the, the pandemic, but we're looking at some, um, some creative ways to do some webinar um, uh, discussion talks. We would, um, we would partner with them and live stream and record their brown bag speaker series. Um, in the past, we had done their poetry nights and other special events in conjunction with the library and having film fest events there at the Edith Stone Room or in the community room. Uh, we've had a number of author talks, uh, presentations. We've also helped facilitate some of the technology between um, debates um, over, over the years, popular um, debates or any sort of um, public showings of uh, interesting government <laughs> um, meetings in person. Um, vice presidential and presidential debates are what come to mind most, and those were always exciting to do in person with a live audience. Um, we have a number of community partnerships um, with Sol Solano Avenue Association, Albany Community Foundation, um, local business, and, um, and some of the strategic partnerships um, with Film Fest. Film Fest um, um, looks for donations um, from local business uh, lo and um, regional. I would, I would say, I would also say in some national, um, we've had some sponsorships from national entities as well. Um, 
So looking at ways that we can create some value if they want to share some funds to support Film Fest. Um, we've done that uh, over the years. Staffing, that has changed. Um, currently, all of um, KALB's media production is with me right now. Um, the We do not have any part-time assistance since the city um, uh, went into um, a stay-at-home order, shelter-in-place, and part-time uh, employees are not working with the city currently. So, so essentially, um, it's it's me. And so we're not able to do quite as much as we've done in the past when we've had staff members. Um, uh, typically, our, our other staff would help out with some of our projects, activities, or they would um, be somebody who films an in-person media, um, in-person meeting at our um, studio facilities, either at City Hall or Community Center. But now that everything is home, I'm the one who does all of the meetings. Um, and in 2017, we took over the, the website. So, so kind of communications has come to KALB. So this is a good place for um, discussing how to better serve the public by sharing information um, through all the different media channels that we have. Um, E-news has grown. Um, we're currently at about close to 6,500 people that are receiving um, uh, our weekly newsletter. Um, which has grown um, since we started uh, in 2017. Um, our AV Apprentices, that is um, sort of a, a youth internship type program that has run out of the recreation department um, where we work with um, usually um, with high school, high school students and they apply for a position to help with recreation events. And I um, kind of co-lead a a program is primarily a recreation department program, but I come in as it relates to audio and video production and what um, and teaching real skills that can be used at our our city events and then how that can turn into a perhaps a paid part time position later on as the as the um, interns kind of gather skills and and um, learn how to work in um, well, in a, in a municipal workplace, but also in event production. And it's been quite successful over the years. And a lot of, um, a lot of great uh, young people have um, come through our AV Apprentice programs. And we've been doing that since, I would say, probably since 2011, 2012. Any questions on any of those? Is, yeah. is that AV still apprentice still going? During not during the not during the pandemic, but likely, you know, depending on you know where we're at when we come back, it was something we would love to be able to add again. It's always been it's been yeah. su successful, helpful all all around. Do you have a question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, I was just wondering where are the um, youth programs usually advertised? Is it through the Albany High School or through the um, community center? How do you usually well, do that? Well, both. It's, it's varied over the years. Um, there was a period of time, um, probably from 2008, 2007 to 2014, where we had a really strong um, uh, ongoing partnership with um, Albany High School's um, um, uh, video production program. Um, Due to their, you know, staff changes and our staff changes, we haven't been doing as, as much, but we try and share as much as we can with, with the high school. Typically, those programs will be advertised in the recreation guide that goes out three times a year, um, and then we'll publicize that through our social media and, and our website. Um, we would make flyers, those would be at the community center, and then we would uh, at different times, we've gone to classrooms to make presentations to talk about what we were doing. Um, we did a lot. It, it, it was kind of on a personal connection with um, either department heads at the high school or with individual teachers within the arts departments where we connect either with music, video, dance, um, or, or kind of um, media product, production computers, and then come to the classes and talk about that. That's, and usually that would have been me or one of the staff from the recreation department doing that. But we're not currently doing that while, while we are kind of in uh, this situation with the pandemic. But you are doing it otherwise, you're still doing the personal 
having relationships with the teachers and, and talking to some classes. Yeah, as best we can. You know, the you know the teaching staff at at and in the Albany School District has a lot on their plate right now, and there's not a lot of extra time for those types of those types of production. Yeah, and there's not really a need for the in-person event production because a lot of that for the recreation department and for the, the city was for our in-person events. And now that everything is virtual, we don't really have a need for that, that specific type of work. However, we could look towards that for any type of content creation, you know, going forward. Perhaps there's a way that we can integrate that um, for, you know, it's one of the things that, that, everybody loves to to talk about is how young people would love to be able to donate their time to create a video or make some social media posts and that's just not this that's just not realistic you know if we like all of us you know we're constrained for time and have priorities and and that is it's a difficult ask ask um, for something as as detailed as writing copy creating graphics doing doing um, any sort of design work as it relates to video editing a video shooting a video so those those sort of things we definitely want to find out some sort of either in-kind compensation or in turn payment and people my experience in working with youth because in addition to what i've been doing with with media you know my role with the city was running youth programs for for many years and it's the food or money is a, is, a, is always a good um incentives um and experience but sometimes in that order but the more that we can offer some type of compensation either with food experience or money that's usually when we get the the most buy-in and does do, i this sounds really out of touch, but does McGregor High still exist? Uh, it it does, um, and but I'm not in direct communication with the the principal, um, you know, at, at this point. However, I am working with the admin staff on a regular basis to for the broadcasting their school board meetings. So it wouldn't take much to kind of jump uh, jump start some type of uh, communication about what we could do. Yeah, because it seems like working with some youth that maybe feel a little bit out on the outside of the dominant, whatever's going on, might be, you know, the arts seem like a really good way of pulling people in and could really make a difference in their lives. Well, you know, that actually brings us, you know, kind of going to our policy review and initiatives. Um, we've That's actually listed down here. Um, if we're looking here at the review and initiatives, the keeping the film fest sustainable, um, you know, obviously we've talked a lot about, you know, the pros and the cons, um, but really the challenges are, you know, as, as it grows, it becomes unsustainable for volunteers, you know, and it's unsustainable for one person on city staff. And you already know the other, a bit of what else I do. So how do we make it sustainable for, for everybody who's, who's involved, especially the volunteers who have been with us for, for the beginning? How do we create, you know, um, in, a, in a time of pandemic or, you know, budget and short supply or competing priorities, how do we, you know, keep the film festival growing or keep it, you know, as it is um, and maintain, you know, what's special about it uh, without getting too big, uh, or having it roll back and be too small. So that becomes one of the things that we'll be looking at. Um, I'll come back to this, but like since we were just talking about youth, um, I just, I'm just going to jump down, if that's okay, support youth media education in Albany. That was, that's one of the items on the work plan. So uh, in conjunction with youth services, what we had on this um, this particular work plan was to utilize our PEG FUDs to create and maintain a new teen center computer lab, our teen computer lab, that is available for content creation for KALB Albany Film Fest city programs, as well as general teen after school needs. That was connected to a staff member who has since left the city. She had a background in film and she was very keen to kind of merge what she was doing in youth programs and bringing that together. In this particular, um, uh, this particular um, type of program, I don't see that happening because we really don't have a teen center program either in person or the facility. So we may want to rework how we 
support youth media education um, with this this work plan. So I think that would be something that we'd want to come back to um, um, in terms of the next work plan and 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 flesh out you know what how the committee could help support that. Um, but if it's okay, I'll jump back up to the top unless anybody has any questions on youth media. Well, one comment is that uh, as far as the film, as, film fest goes, we've always tried to make it big enough uh, that it covers the cost of having the film fest. And if, if it's able to generate a profit, that that money can be used for youth uh, media education. Uh, you know, that's correct future filmmakers so there is a connection between the film fest and supporting youth media education too yeah and primarily each film fest that we've had has been a break even you know making enough money to cover the the expenses um at least the hard <laughs> the hard expenses the volunteer effort that is you know that is almost incalculable the amount of work that that naomi has put into pro programming um, that she does in her volunteer time or the, the amount of work that that Jack does and kind of the outreach. We also have another member, uh, not a, a former member of CMAC, Ellen Toomey, who, who does some some tremendous amount of um, uh, steeply discounted graphic design work for the, the film fest. So we've got people pitching in, but it's not a realistic or sustainable means of continuing the film fest for another 10 years at that at that level of, of work. So back up to the top, looking at the keeping the film festival sustainable, that those are the challenges. Um, the the next item on the policy review is CMAC will encourage and support more Albany related programming and community pr produced programming, both documentary and narrative. Um, that's what we want to see. We want the community submitting content that we can play on our channel and and upload to our YouTube channel and share through our social media. Um, but you know, with you know a staff of of one, um, it's difficult to do the outreach. So the more that we can create systems that 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 share that information with the public or or let people know that this is a resource, um, I think that that could be of benefit. Um, and obviously finding ways um, to um, encourage the community to produce content. It's a lot of work, you know, it's, to make something good, you can make something good once, but once you make something good once, other people are gonna wanna see the next, the next episode, the next version of that, the next iteration. And, you know, that's a challenge. We've done a lot of great one <laughs> versions of one, but, you know, we've, in the past, we've done these soapbox events at, where the community can just come up and get on camera and talk about whatever they want, do a performance. We've had, um, uh, Jack, I think, was involved with the um, the council members on bikes, are, um, where it was kind of a riff on, um, on uh, uh, well, Jack, do you remember? Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't involved in it, but uh, it was like yeah, Jerry Seinfeld, comedians in cars getting coffee. Yeah, so this was more council members on bikes getting coffee and talking yeah, about, right. about stuff. And I know that, you know, Naomi's, you know, dream is to have some sort of two ferns talk show um, here in Albany on current issues. So creating that content, I think that we can, you know, we can lend our our either knowledge or expertise or give people the tools to be able to create something on their own or kind of make it less overwhelming to get started. And then once they get the bug, they can create it on their own. Any yeah. questions on that? Uh, I was just a comment, which is that with so much going on right now in the country and then um, setting aside the politics, but the Black Lives Matter part of the what's going on in the country. Um, and then the cur current things that are coming up in the city around the policing task force and more conversations, uh, hearing from people of color about what it's like to be in Albany versus being white. And it seems like a lot of great opportunities for hearing real stories that are that are in tune with what's going on in the in the larger in the country. And it's and sort of flipping, I don't know, like, you know, digging underneath the surface uh, of what's going on in Albany and looking at the real, the real story. And that's those are the stories I would I'd love to encourage people to come forward or yeah absolutely because you know supporting both documentary and narrative there's we've we've also kind of 
had some conversations with a historical society. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, before and after current and during stories about what it's like to be here either in the past or now. I think there's a lot of ways that we could support people getting that information there. I don't think as a city entity, as KALB, that we would be producing that content, but we can certainly become the venue to, to share it um, on our TV station or through our YouTube or point people to it, you know, through, through social media and find ways to help people understand how to create it for themselves um, and kind of walk them through that process. Yeah, and I, I would say just for our future work plan, the real um, issue is going to be outreach to people to just let them know they can do that and we would like to see it. Yeah. So that's isn't, kind of the isn't that Isn't that what the council just gave us as a new charge? The, the new charge is it? Yeah, we, yeah. We'll, we'll get we'll get to that as part outreach, but it's also what how you know out, outside of um, outside of uh, internet and television. What are what are the other ways that we can make it for people who don't have access to 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 phones and typical communication channels? What what else are we doing to make sure that everybody is 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 able to have access to our to and and that's that's a that's a tough dis discussion. Like, how do you how do you share media content without without the internet? Right at this point, you know, it's it becomes something that we can as a or you as a as a committee will be able to kind of help help the city flush out the best way to do that. Uh, I I I really I think that reaching out to to groups the people that are already preformed groups and and getting contacts like the faith community, um, the school district, the parents. I, I think there are a lot of sort of subgroups. There's parents, of, um, I think there's a lot of different kinds of parent groups that go on that I don't know anything about. I mean, I hear about, but I don't, don't have any communication. But I think that there are people that are talking to each other already. And if we can get the word out that we are interested in communicating with them and hearing from them and supporting them and telling the stories that maybe they're telling already, but they're, but they're not at the surface. So I, I agree and I was glad that they added that to the charge, Naomi. Yeah, I'd also like to point out that we've been thinking of media in terms of the computer and film and TV, but it's also writing and graphic novels. And that's, a. would love to see graphic novels as a way to communicate what's going on with people. Wouldn't that be amazing? We, we did a program, I did a program at um, several years ago at the library when I was working there, I brought in a graphic novel writer, author, and we did a program where the young people came in and created a graphic novel with the help, and then they came, you know, reported back, and it was it was amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we could get funding for something like that, possibly, especially if we did it with the library. There are libraries in the country who get funding for bringing in somebody to kind of help lead that. So mm -hmm. great. We've also been looking at podcasts too. That's that's another thing yeah. that's actually on this work yeah. plan that we talked about in the past. Um, so let me let me move forward um, through the use of live stream. KMAC, CMAC will support KLB to provide a series of workshops and trainings related to production equipment, filmmaking, digital storytelling. That's what we've been talking about. We did a couple of those back in 2019 um, where we had um, I, Naomi or was that 2018? It might have been 2018. <laughs> but, it's, been yeah. a, it's been a long time. Um, long time. The at at the community center, we have we have had access to um, different rooms, uh, Edith Stone room primarily. At different times where the where the the recreation department or the library wasn't use it wasn't using that space, and we've been able to put on some free workshops there. Uh, what's what's handy about that particular location is it's close to our head end studio location, which is downstairs in the basement of the community center. So it's very quick to get to our our cameras and our equipment, anything that we'd use to demo. And there in the Edith Stone room where we've been, where we have installed the audio visual system, um, it's very easy to share, you know, the technology with a group of people. So that's why we've been doing it there on site of the community center, but we can 
you know, we have we have the capability to be able to go mobile, to go on site to other locations. And perhaps that's something that we can look at, you know, in the future once we're back in person. Um, but we also have the advantage now that everybody is accustomed to to a virtual environment. So it wouldn't be inconceivable to do some sort of training workshop class um, through the webinar or the meeting uh, functionality of Zoom, where we can play back and talk about things and bring in experts to talk about how to do to do any of what we're doing now, live streaming events, um, m music, plays, festivals, you know, uh, filmmaker talks, artist talks. Those are those are all things that are currently being done in Zoom, and you know, it's obviously, you know, we're all getting more adept at doing that. Um, where we can lend our expertise is perhaps, you know, even as before we come back in person, we would be able to share some of this information if we wanted to create some types of class or programming. Um, but as I said, you know, we're, we're a very small department. There's, there's only so much we can, that I can do as, as a one person um, uh, shop, but the, the, the potential is there and with the right type of kind of community infrastructure and, and the desire for some list of priority priorities prioritization of what we want to do, then we certainly could do that. Um, we already spoke about youth uh, media education, um, economic development in the Albany business community through media. Um, again, it could be classes, workshops, you know, sharing best practices. Um, the Film Fest has been kind of the main um, uh, driver of that connection because we've been working with the downtown business community to look at the Film Fest is a regional event that draws people to Albany, um, that um, that creates a reason for people to come to frequent the, the businesses around. We did a number of um, uh, partnership programs with with restaurants and bars for e either free or reduced items um, if you brought in your Film Fest ticket stub or a program. Um, those those. I think we're on the cusp of being very successful when, you know, the, the service staff would remember that there was a <laughs> there was a campaign going on at the restaurant when somebody came there. But we did there was a number of places where we did some kind of um, meet and greet and um, kind of kind of open dis what what do we call those? The filmmaker lounge was one of the, right. one yeah. of the things that was really riffing on our desire to create a community around something introduce people with other people who do the same things or kind of facilitate making those connections. And that worked quite well for the filmmakers and Film Fest. And that also could be something that we do um, for community volunteers who are interested in telling Albany stories or building journalism in Albany or kind of creating some, some other type of network where people can in, get involved in sharing what's happening. Um, and then as we bring those people to, to, to town, then they see what a great place Albany is. And, you know, they get their coffees and get their, their food and buy, buy cars and all the things that you'd want to do if you're ready. Get their nails done. They buy a Tesla one. They come, they come to the film. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And then finally, in relation to the um, strategic plan, uh, engaging our diverse community. Um, KLB, you know, has the pretend is and can even do more to be an important community source of public government and educational information. Um, I think we're seeing now that there is a strong desire to to let people know more what is happening in Albany and how do we best go about that. Um, video and electronic media, like Naomi was saying, we've been focused to give a little bit of history. Primarily, this was about cable TV. And cable TV turned into digital media, but along the way, digital media also kind of forgets about like the people who don't have access. So, so what what do we do for the people who don't have access to the internet, or have a laptop, or a camera, or an or an iPhone? How do we how do we successfully get not necessarily just messaging, but you know, like relevant information, like how to do this or how to do that or how to attend a meeting. But we have seen, you know, since the pandemic, an uptick in in new people coming to meetings through virtual platforms. You know, there's a there's new people who weren't engaged before when they had to come um, come in person to a meeting. You know, how do we build on that? How do we get more people involved and engaged? Um, and you know 
that's one of the charges here of the committee. Um, um, new connections with business community. Um, a big part of public access is allowing ordinary citizens to create programs and broadcast them to the community. With the consolidation of media, you know, it's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult to get your show on MSNBC, <laughs> you know. But, you know, if somebody's, you know, scrolling through their channels, it's not as difficult for an Albany resident to get their show on KALB. So, um, and then Albany Film Fest has brought international films and filmmakers to Albany and sparks creativity and conversational engagement among residents. And that's proven to be the case at every Film Fest event that we've done. Um, advanced Economic Development and the Arts, Film Fests, Q&A filmmakers, um, the connection with um, local businesses, um, government accountability, you know, all of our meetings are, are, are streamed. So, you know, this is certainly transparency in government um, where everybody is able to see what is happening um, in real time and be able to participate. Um, as we look through our goals, as we can reconnect, you know, with AUSD, um, that, that is definitely possible. Um, we did celebrate and recognize a 10 year KALB anniversary or, well, we did the, for the film fest, but KALB, you know, we probably want to celebrate that to a certain extent too. That I think we became officially KALB in 2008. Do you, Naomi, Jack, do you remember? Yeah, that sounds right. So, um, 10 year film fest anniversary, which we did. Um, we're looking at, uh, in the past, we were looking at as a goal for KLB podcasts, some additional youth media classes and workshop, um, expanding film fest, and then a uh, teen film fest to engage youth. That is something that was on our plan um, here. And then something we're currently in discussion with the Albany Library in collaboration. So are there any questions, um, I think, before we go to some public comment? Um, on what I've presented here for the work plan? It's a great, it's a great start, um, or a big start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, work, I'm working forward. Um, thank you for that. I, I just one comment. Um, wow, two participants raised hands. Um, uh, is that we need to take out the word ordinary or and take out the word citizen for that matter. Okay. There should be no... I don't know what an ordinary citizen is. Like, what does that even mean, ordinary? Like, what? So I think it should just say community member. Okay. On the language. And and well, while we're taking out language, we should also take out the word stand. Okay. And replace it with something that's, you know, not an ableist term. Okay. But otherwise, that's those are just picky little editing things. Um, this is great. It's a it's a lot of you covered a lot of territory. Dan. You know we you know we've had a, there's there's a lot that we do behind the scenes that, that we don't that I don't get a chance to talk about. So it's kind of exciting for me. Um, but we also haven't met for a long time, and there's a lot of catching up that we need to do to kind of bring us up to speed, or like bring the rest of the committee up to speed. So, you know, I'm, I kind of went into a little bit more detail since we have two new um, members, and also to kind of to refresh our our our, our vintage members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that, uh, Jack. Yeah, uh, when you were going over the uh, the idea about outreach, Jeremy. Uh, I was remembering from our last meeting, one we just had the minutes of, and what we were discussing there was doing a survey to uh, find out what the community wants as far as media. And uh, I think it was in that context, it was to find volunteers to start making videos or some kind of content. Uh, but I think it, it fits in nicely with this effort to find different groups around the city and what their interests might be and to try to uh, develop some priorities by finding out what the community wants. Yeah, that's a great idea to be able to, if we really reach out personally, if one of us showed up to ask a group of people um, or had a survey, but also I think that personal, like, like Jeremy was reaching out to the high school and working, mm -hmm. I think there's something about right. that where you you, you actually take the time to talk to someone and say, we're interested in hearing what you have to say that yeah. really makes a difference to people. But I think that's a great point. Any other comments before we go to public comment? 
Yes. Just wondering how um, how do we get started with um, preparing for the next this coming festival? Um, what is the agenda, or I guess schedule for that? For we're talking about the the film festival, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be it, certainly you know sign up for the 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 film fest newsletter at the albanyfilmfest.org. dot uh, Take a look at the website. Um, the, our city council will will be looking at all of the different programs that the city is offering and determining kind of how the rollout happens as we come out of the pandemic. And they'll probably be discussing that, I would say, within the next couple of months. I'm not sure when it's going to be on their agenda. But once that that gets determined, then we'll be able to um, open up the, 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 the film submissions, and then we'll set a date based on a particular time frame that it takes to collect film, then create a program, and then create a virtual event. Um, but I don't expect to go back in person for for a while. Typically, our for the last ten years, our film festival has been in in March because it fell in between some of the other recreation and you know community events. So there was there was a window that worked, and that's obviously very different right now since we don't have a lot of other. Um, in person, we don't have any in person events, and there's not a lot of other in person community events. So, we'll be determining that at some point in the near future. Thank you. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll have some determination before the next CMAC meeting in April. That's I think that would be something to hope for. So, what what is kind of the the time frame from between submissions and I mean, how much in advance do you open up submissions typically? Like. Two typically, months. no, no, it's it's several months. It's usually, um, we typically open, Naomi, wouldn't you say, in about June or July, and we oh. accept. If we're opening up in earlier than that. Yeah, so okay. it, it was about five or six months. Then we, we accept on, uh, submissions, then we close it usually in November, and then we gives us, you know, a very short period of time to review, you know, what's been submitted accept and then create a program that makes sense and that's where Naomi's magic kind of comes in as taking you know 30 or 40 films that all have different subject matter and creating some some uh, connections between those and creating program uh, around that people films that you know have a flow connect to each other and you know that just takes time you know it takes a it takes a lot of figure that are you know, the volunteer staff and the judges will have to watch close to, what, 30 films, 30, 40? We end up with 30, 40 films. We watch maybe 100 films. Right. So so it, it takes time. Uh, it's a, it, it takes a lot of time to review everything. Um, the, we, it's a short film festival, so everything is under 30 minutes. Um, did that change? Was that going to change 45. to a 40? 40, 40. 45. And is there a theme each time or that people are trying to no theme? Okay. No. 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 Did that answer your question, Vice Chair? That answer no. your question. Oh. Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> you know, recognize your name as vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll open it up to the public. And is that something that um, Anne does? Is that right? Yeah, it looks like we have two um, two hands raised. So I'll bring in Jeremiah. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Hi, it's uh, Jeremiah here. Thank you. Um, yeah, what a great presentation. I'll, I'll take that as a presentation. Uh, you did a very good job, Jeremy. Um, I appreciate everything you did. Oops, he's muted. You know, so yeah, um, a few things I just want to have questions. Maybe you could open up a little Facebook uh, page. So I know some city of Albany posts things on Facebook. Um, you know, maybe... People could submit a 20 second Facebook video, somehow kind of a short story in a way, or like a short video. It doesn't have to be 45 minutes because it doesn't sound like the film festival is going to be. For he keeps getting muted. I don't know why. Uh, 
Jeremiah, uh, you've been, you, you're muted for a second. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my phone keeps ringing. Um, it doesn't sound like it's going to be on for a while, the film fest. So maybe we could have something sooner than later. Um, yeah, like a 20-second Facebook video. People could submit small things and we could upload it somehow to you know channel 33. Um, I remember a long time ago, I saw Anne over on Cornell. There was a video night along Solano and Cornell. It's kind of a, a pop-up video movie night outdoors. I was wondering if we can have outdoor videos, possibly um, you know, at Memorial Park, um, using those outlets by the center circle, or I don't know, maybe like a talent show kind of thing. Um, also, where does the money go if you know people put money? Does it go, go in some sort of general fund, um, some sort of thing? And how how would like how would I volunteer? How would somebody volunteer for the film fest? Um, I've got so many notes over here. You did such a long presentation. It's great. Um, uh, let's see. Um, oh, congratulations on item six one to everybody. Um, oh, spring into haiku. I was going to say maybe when the art department does spring into haiku, um, we could post some of the haikus on channel 33. You know, you can kind of flash back and forth, you know, do five or 10 seconds of each spring into haiku that gets accepted. You could show those on the TV. Um, it'd be kind of neat for people to see those poems. And yeah, I suggest the AV high school program. Um, yeah, get in touch with Albany Unified School District. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremiah. Oh, uh, Jeremy, you're on mute, I think. Yeah, sorry, I got it. Next, we have uh, Nick. Go ahead. Hey, hey thank you very much for um, hearing me. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, my name's Nick Peterson. I, I've been a resident in Albany for 24, 25 years. Um, I'm retired, and now I actually serve on uh, the Climate Action Committee for the city of Albany and have done that for almost four years now. So I, I kind of wish the next item had come up before you discussed your work plan, because um, th this pertains to that, because that's actually huge. And I want to make sure I understand what um, uh, the, I, I think it's a council is asking you to become more of a communications portal or to, to get information, governmental information out to citizens. And that's something that I get, um, really interested in, and it is a huge thing now. Um, and in that case, that kind of reflects on, I think I heard you say early on um, that the, the Film Fest would now be more run by maybe a nonprofit, the Friends of the Film Fest or something, and most of the energies would be there. And it wouldn't be CMAC that would actually, because I, being on the Climate Action Committee, we got slammed over the uh, Arts and Green Festival, which uh, had been going on for years, back when the committee members, he's now no longer on the um, Climate Action Committee, was very instrumental in doing that. But we were told very directly at meetings from the city manager, you are not to put that on anymore. Any uh, sub, you know, committees do not put on events. And at first that sort of rankled us, but then it went into uh, you know, kind of a, a thing that was done through Parks and Recs and actually allowed us to focus more on really urgent issues at hand related to climate change, which is really getting our climate action and adaptation plan out. The um, Arts and Green Festival being more kind of a feel good thing, whereas uh, getting some real action going on reducing our emissions is more critical. So although there was a little bit of educational content and, and community education going on with the Arts and Greens, it, it was really pretty not very well attended and um, wasn't really doing the level of communication that we needed. And so that's what my interest is. And I, I'm just urging you to, you know, there's all this thrill with the, with the festival. I think it's great too, but you guys need to move on to more important things. And that's what I'm kind of urging you to do. Thanks. Thank you. 
Any are there any other people? I, I'm not seeing any other hands. Okay, so um, what do we? So th there's no action to be taken on this, right? This this is. No, um, but Chair, I can answer some of those questions. Uh, I think Jeremiah had a few questions. Um, the, you know, I, I run all of the, the social media Facebook sites and we do have a KALB Facebook site. So that could be, you know, pretty much that's just, there's not a lot of action there, but we could do more there from that platform if we wanted to. So Albany Community Media is the, the Facebook handle. Um, and actually, if you go to the city's Facebook page and you look at tonight's advertisement for this particular meeting, you can see that it was tagged there. Um, the, um, in terms of the um, volunteering for the Film Fest through the Albany Film Fest site, you can sign up and, and apply to be a volunteer. Um, the um, doing outdoor, we probably won't do any um, outdoor events, you know, but I have been one of the main people instrumental for doing any of our outdoor film production, you know, screens and audio and video. That's typically my role with the city. So if we want to bring Film Fest into a space when it's appropriate, you know, that is certainly something that 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 we have done in conjunction with, you know, the recreation department or through recreation programs or, you know, any of the things um, we've, we, the film fest actually talked about doing some sort of, you know, drive in out, you know, when we were exploring, you know, options, you know, it's Albany doesn't have a lot of big spaces where people can pull in, you know, with a, with a socially distanced vehicle and have a big screen for, you know, a small amount of money. Um, but there are, you know, some ways that we can include that in our conversations about how to do outreach. Um, one of the things that we have done with KALB and the Recreation Department is try to use those large community gatherings as a way of sharing what we're doing. Well, you know, well, music in the park, it was one of the primary ways, 4th of July events, um, uh, like was mentioned before, the, the Arts and Green Festival. Um, KLB always had a booth at all of, you know, those, those events to kind of get, try and connect with people and share either information about the Film Fest or about community media. Um, so those are definitely things that we can continue once we get back in person. And then just to answer Nick's uh, question, um, we will be adding the next item to the work plan. So we'll be able to develop that. Um, uh, more fully. I think that's um, an excellent idea about um, the haiku post uh, videos. I think that's something that would be um, really good that we could work with the arts committee on and creating a video representation of all of those haikus, um, perhaps in, in, in place of, you know, what people typically see around town or in addition to. Great. Thank you. So there's, um, okay. So, um, we're ready to move on to item 6-3, is that right? Um, and that's, um, there's nothing, there's nothing, um, no paperwork on that one, right? Is there? No. We, well, what we have um, for that was from the city council's last right. agenda. You'll be able to find the, the, the ordinance. I think Anne is able to share the exact language um, from that last council meeting. So Anne, if you could share your screen with that, um, with that item, we can talk through that. Um, this will be for us to discuss um, or for you as a committee to discuss. And then um, we, the way that I, and I, I would imagine that we would want to move somewhat fast with this. And now, Julie, since you're the chair, perhaps you and I can look at this in between this meeting and the next meeting in, in April and perhaps come back with some, some options. But I, what I was thinking we could do tonight is kind of really address kind of what we're talking about here so that we have something uh, to present to council um, sometime after our next meeting. So we can talk through this item, kind of what it means to, to the committee, and then um, have some discussion, take some questions from the public about, you know, what are, what are some ways in which we can do this? First outline, you know, uh, outline what the, what, what the ask is from the city council, how community media access committee can help facilitate determine what the issue is, come up with some ideas, some suggestions, um, and then 
have something to report back to the to the council and potentially add to the next work plan. That's that's kind of how I would see this uh, going forward. Okay, that sounds, Jack. Uh, could we possibly get some more context from the city council discussion about this item so that we kind of know uh, what their thinking was and coming up with this as a addition to the work plan? I, if you, oh, go ahead. I can. I can speak to the, I can speak to that also. I mean, Jeremy, I'm sure has a lot of information about it, but I can just speak to that because I've been going to city council meetings for the last 10 years, um, complaining about the fact that there's no way that people who don't have access to the internet and it's gotten worse, especially now with the pandemic, but just in general, there's no outreach that I can see in engaging what they call engaging our diverse community. And so I don't know how much of it was the, was because I brought it up yet again, um, and this came after that. So that might have been part of the the. Well, I think what happened is that um, actually Jeremy and I, I had a conversation, and um, instead of because I've been pushing for creating like a, a, a separate task force or a committee that would do that, and then um, at the last meeting I suggested that maybe it could just be an expansion of CMAC in terms of you know sort of expanding what 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 we do. And that maybe, I don't know how much of that was based on me saying it, but I can tell you that I probably had something to do with the fact that this happened. Um, because I think it's incredibly important and it sounds like everybody else as I um, hear too, that we communicate with our community um, and not just, um, not just stick something on the website and send out some emails, but actually figure out what, who's, not, who's not hearing about our events, who's not showing up, who doesn't know what's going on and letting them know and if um and Jeremy didn't need another committee to oversee. <laughs> okay, good. So that's kind of the history from my viewpoint. Yeah. But I don't know there's there's probably more that Jeremy knows. Well, you know, I can that that's that's all correct. That's that's what, you know, uh, I heard in in that discussion if you if you want to go back to the last two council meetings with our with our new council, you can Go either onto our YouTube or onto our Granica site and take a look at what what that discussion was. If you want to see kind of a verbatim, you know, kind of like what the thought was. But I think what Julie said is is um, correct. What we'll be doing is coming up with the different ways that we can kind of help facilitate that. Uh, and and I, I have some ideas myself, but perhaps maybe we want to go around um, the committee and talk about kind of what these thoughts are um, or you know, what this means, have some discussion, then open it up to the public and then come back. Um, or if you have any other questions for me um, related to what the city does in terms of communications, you know, perhaps that's maybe the best way to go forward. I don't want to offer up all my ideas. I think I have some pretty good ideas, you know, since I've been doing this for a while. But, you know, I, you know, I don't want to, I've already talked a lot. <laughs> does anybody want to uh, have some thoughts on, I mean, this will be We'll be discussing this at the next meeting too, right? This is just sort of a preliminary. What are we thinking? I, I think the idea, you know, since since we meet quarterly, it would be good to um, the some options that you have is you know you can create a subcommittee tonight uh, on this so that we could you know work more offline. Where this really ties into what CMAC was doing before, there was two things that I think um, is important um, for Film Fest. We've had some good success at you know connecting connecting like minds, right? You know, connecting filmmakers with, you know, fans or with people in the community who work in the industry and bringing them, you know, we, you know, we've, you know, got some really great talent just within, you know, the one square mile of Albany. Um, and one of the things that's on this, this, this work plan as it is now, and what we had been looking at just getting into pre pandemic was developing a volunteer KLB community media crew, some something that was outside the the scope of the 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 advisory body that could help people connect. Um, you know, maybe it's you know some sort of you know monthly gathering of people who are interested in storytelling or classes or facilitating conversation or you know whatever it takes to get people in person. Um, like what we did with Film Fest, where there would be a filmmaker's lounge where, you know, it'd be some sort of happy hour kind of thing or coffee hour kind of thing at a particular venue uh, somewhere in Albany. Um, 
at a, at a parklet, at a coffee shop, at a restaurant, or moving, you know, moving locations so that, you know, we could spread it around, make it different times, make it more convenient for a variety of different people to, to attend, get to know each other, and then make those connections. Because as we've seen in CMAC, it's very difficult for the advisory body members to be involved in the production, most specifically because of the Brown Act it's very hard to do a production meeting or an event and then notice that, come up with an agenda for a shoot or working through a script or doing some sort of um, planning meeting for a film fest gala. Those are things that are really hard to do, you know, with the constraints of the Brown Act, but it's not hard for volunteers or a community group to do. So perhaps what we can look at, what we were going to look at towards, um, you know, getting people engaged in community media storytelling um, slash journalism, slash Albany history. These are all different things, slash working with with youth. You know, perhaps that type of idea can be used for facilitating sort of like a street team of Albany folks who want to help get the word out, um, be it emails, phone trees, um, printed flyers, posters, all these different um, means, and then have a coordinated means of doing doing that. Yeah, I love the idea of phone trees. They think phone trees have a lot of potential. Old fashioned, but to the point. Any um, Naomi or Jack or Vice Chair, any comments or suggestions, thoughts? Oh, Naomi, if you're speaking, I think you're on, you're on mute. Oh, are you speaking? Sorry. Sorry, I was saying no, <laughs> not at the moment. <laughs> I forgot I was mute. Well, I, I guess I would just say pursue the idea of doing some kind of a survey and identifying groups that we want to be in touch with. Uh, you know, that could use, we could have better communication with. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like the idea of a, of a committee um, that's focused solely on outreach. So it could be like, the name of it, Outreach Committee, and um, we could have different categories as you listed already, which type of, of outreach do we wanna do and assign different people to every kind. So some people do phone calling, some people do physical flyers. Um, and uh, regarding physical flyers, uh, I was wondering if, do we have access to printing services through the city, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, you know, flyer, you know, it's, you know, I've thought about this a lot over, over the years in terms of communication, you know, and, and Naomi can talk about this too. There's, you know, for flyers and posters, you know, obviously public meetings are time sensitive. So, so the city, if we talk specifically about meetings, we have to have agendas um, and everything posted three days in advance uh, of a meeting. So the workflow to get, um, to get, and we also, within this context of the agenda, is there's a lot of information by law that has to be there for, for that. So part of what we would have to come up with in any sort of discussion about flyering for particular events is, you know, what information can we remove to share that it's happening, right? How do we have that conversation? What is it? Is it the time? Is it is it is it the name? Is it the day? Is it a really long Zoom link or a URL? Like, and do if we make a post, you know, one thing for one week, does it include, you know, the other meetings that are happening, you know, within the con the, the scope of a week or a month? And like, how do you know? How do we determine what that language is that is that is um, most effective at encouraging people to come. Because if you make a, fl a flyer with too much information, nobody's going to read it. But if you create a flyer that has very easy to read information, it may not have everything that you need to, to be on there. So I think that would be something that the, the council would be looking at this committee to determine and another group of people other than yourselves to implement, right? So that would be, you know, the committee trying to determine how to get people involved in sharing that. But to answer your question directly, yes, we have printing services and we have accounts with, you know, printers within the Albany community. It would be very easy to send a, a document to be printed, but there is a certain amount of time frame for creating that language, creating the design and creating um, and the, you know, the, the final eyes, you know, to make sure that all the information is correct, 
you know, so that anything that's coming out on behalf of the city is accurate and clearly legible. One of the things that, that, that I've been thinking about, because it's been presented at many meetings about the Big Bellies, is there's some really good poster space there. But that's not something that is so, something we could do on a weekly basis. But perhaps just as an idea for anything we want to promote, maybe there is a poster for every advisory body that says when it meets in large print with some very basic information, second Tuesday, something something like that, that, that kind of keeps the design of, you know, the city's, you know, logo and branding that we already use. So it's easily identifiable and easily readable. Over these last couple of years, Film Fest has been using those to, to create posters and put them in the big bellies. But as we come to find out, we have to be, you know, we have to be very specific on the material that we use. If it rains, it gets wet, um, you can't read it. If you put it down at the lower spot, in any sort of small text, nobody can see the link or the information. So there are some, there are some very specific designs things that we'll have to take into consideration um, for utilizing big belly poster space um, or if we create posters you know you know we've been doing posters in the recreation department for many years but usually it's a single event so how do we do that for encouraging people to come to ongoing city meetings that change every week even though they have a repeating time so how do we do do that the um the um losing my 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 train of i lost my train of thought but I'll, I'll i'll come back to it there's another thought that i have um you know on on that kind of uh, promote oh i remember what it is then it's also the language one of the things that i've been thinking about a lot as we prom talk about this uh, from the city's point of view we announced that there is something happening we we have some some simple highlights of what's going to be talked about but we don't have the capacity to write really inviting language to in common parlance like why would somebody want to come to this right we were certainly not writing from a point of view that we're inviting people with a lot of information so perhaps that's something that the community can do in a different way um, but all of those things take time to develop on an ongoing basis to to get information out in advance of a meeting happening. So you have to start from like when somebody's going to attend and work backwards for how much time um, uh, the people will need to have that information to put it onto their schedule and the time for us to create that and disseminate that. So, so it'd be kind of a perpetual thing. So if we can figure out a system and what we want to do, then that would probably be the best way to go forward. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, thank you, Jeremy. It seems like, um, I, I know that when the, I first brought when I brought this up, I walked up and down Solano and looked at that the kiosk that's way toward the top and I the Dario Manichetti one and then I looked and there are other places where it looked like there could be a kiosk and that would be a way that would be protected from the environment from the elements you know if you could close the glass door and um, so that was one thought I had is if there were more kiosks and if we had something that was always there that was brightly colored. That's one of my issues with the city notices is that it's like the inside out poster is so brightly colored and it's so inviting. But when you post something about, they, they post something about the city meetings, it's a quarter sheet, tiny little font and looks so boring. Like would anybody, why would anybody, you know, it doesn't look welcoming. It doesn't look like we really want you to come to these meetings. We just love the idea of you coming. There isn't that feeling. But if we had something that was maybe always there that was big and welcoming and bright, and then we just changed the meeting itself, got changed as a small, you know, on it, you know what I mean? So that, um, or the dates or something, so that it, it drew people's attention and also looked very welcoming. It's, um, I think that would be. Wonderful. You know, an another thing that can be discussed is digital signage that has pros and cons. We already do a pretty robust bulletin board with information, but, you know, getting a screen somewhere in Albany, that, that could be, that could be a challenge you know there's i think there's strong opinions about digital signage um here in in town but it's something that we already have so and you know obviously you know costs you know would you know come up with that but i think um if there's no other you know conversation from the committee um perhaps it's time chair um we'll seem to go to public comment and get yeah. some thoughts i just wanted to check i thought jack had his hand up for a second did you we're gonna say yeah. okay all right go ahead mm. Okay, we have Jeremiah. Thank you so much. I love this agenda item. I mean, this is totally me. Um, yeah, I've been doing physical flyers on my own. 
uh, just as a citizen, because I feel the, the need for it, you know, this kind of information needs to be, be out there in the public. I know I attend every single public meeting, no matter what it is. Um, and I feel like sometimes uh, Julie and myself are the only public comments. <laughs> and I just wish there was more community involvement, you know, talk to the leadership class at Albany High School, you know, have the leadership class be part of the curriculum to attend some sort of uh, public meeting, right? And Julie, you're right. I second your more kiosks idea. Um, put one right there on Cornell um, or Talbot, you know, kind of sort of thing. Um, I would love to be on the subcommittee. You know, Julie, you have my email address. If there's an opportunity for me to volunteer on this committee, please let me know. This is totally me. Um, I love to be on this streets team or whatever you want to call it. Um, the Albany copy place next to cafe Raj. Um, she gives me uh, black and white copies uh, for four cents a copy. If I do things for the city, she gives me a little break. Um, and um, is the journal still going on the Albany El Cerrito journal newspaper? I'm not sure if that's still active or not. Um, maybe we could put something in there also um, for this committee. We have Albany Channel 33. So we could post three days in advance the agenda, um, you know, climate action committee meeting, the Zoom ID number and the date. And then it could flip a screen to the agenda so people could sit in and read it at home. I just don't know why we don't post these public meetings on Albany's TV channel. I mean, we should utilize the resources that we have. Um, Agenda, you know, Zoom ID number, please register in advance if you need to. Uh, you know, some of the Albany businesses like Gordo's, um, we could put these public meetings uh, in the business window. I've got one business that lets me do it. Um, there's a cell phone repair shop across the street from Safeway. Um, his name's Gary, and he lets me post public meetings in his window. So I think that's great. Um, you were speaking on how we're going to do this, right? Weekly on the big bellies. Maybe we could just post the month calendar, you know, January, um, make a big poster and it could show all the meetings with the big zoom ID number. And maybe we should make these, uh, public meetings to where you don't have to register in advance. You could just pop in that zoom ID number and you're logged into the zoom. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremiah, sorry. Jays. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks. <laughs> Next. Nick. Good evening, uh, Nick Peterson again. Yeah, actually, I, I feel like nominating Jeremiah as town crier, you know, because <laughs> he does such an excellent job of, uh, and he's so dialed in. So, but not, um, not to make light of that, actually, you know, the city of Albany did used to have a public information officer and getting information out to the public and what's going on and doing it effectively and reaching as many people as possible is a full-time job. So um, I think that person is, isn't is with the city and, I, and it sounds like there's an interest in having um, advice on how to do that. You know, as someone on a committee that has what I think are critical existential kind of issues coming before our community about climate action and what do we do individually to change our behavior to uh, break our addiction to fossil fuels, we hardly ever get anyone at our climate action committee meetings. Um, and it's usually the same people and I know this is a highly critical issue with the citizens and the, the community of Albany. They're very interested in it, and, but yet we do the e-blast, we do the this, we do the that, and we're not getting the attention to these critical things. And we're gonna start bringing forward policy to the city council that's gonna, everyone's gonna come and start crying about it and that this impacts me and it's negative. It's like, yeah, but what are you gonna do? So I almost feel like we need a big community meeting or a much more, you know, 
the, all the seats fill that the climate action committee thing where you can really hear what people are willing to do to broach this subject because it's not happening as rapidly as it needs to. Um, I think there's the, also this false assumption that the city is gonna do stuff for us. And what I've learned in being uh, involved with the city is we've got highly overworked, talented staff like Jeremy working their behind off, wearing multiple hats. And a lot of it's gotta be volunteer work and we've gotta get our citizens um, motivated and activated. So I think there's a lot that can be done in coordinating things through the schools. That's one of the one thing most people are involved with through the schools and, and through community organizations through businesses. I like the idea of the kiosks. I think our little kiosk up there was a good idea, but it is so 20th century. You know, in the 21st century, maybe we can partner with certain businesses to put flat screens in their windows. If they provide them, uh, then the city information could be uh, changed there rather rapidly. So I, I don't know, it's a huge thing. And I, I really am glad that you guys are mulling it over. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, right, go back to the agenda. Okay, so it, this also doesn't require any action, right, on, on our part. This is just informational. Um, oh, it says, um, yeah, no, it doesn't say. So. No, <clears throat> but what we can, what we can do tonight, um, and perhaps our city clerk can, can talk to us specifically about the, the change to the, the work plan for the, for the committee and what we need to do in order to create either create a subcommittee to work on this offline, or if it's something that the chair would like to do directly with me, or if we want to have come up with, um, I would imagine that when once we get to our future agenda items, we'll be, you know, redoing the work plan for the for the next year and figuring out a way to do that. That won't be until April. You know, what is what is the best way forward in the meantime? Um, there's some low hanging fruit um, that that wouldn't be terribly difficult to do in terms of coordinating with the school district and, you know, sharing, sharing how we share each other's information. Um, there's, you know, obviously our, our social media and our, and our website and calendar calendaring that that's stuff that we can do, but everything else is going to create require some, some more thought and discussion, especially, you know, it, um, why would people want to attend, you know, and, and how do you, how do you um, invite people, um, you know, through the language that we use, you know, what is going to make them want to take time out of their day to come to a public meeting? Um, because, you know, over the many years that I've been behind the scenes watching just about every single meeting, you know, there's a lot of people who are surprised when they just find out about something that has been discussed by some other people, you know, for the last six months or a year. Um, because it's the first that they heard about it because people's lives are busy and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, reasons why not everybody, you know, I live in Oakland and I rarely go to the Oakland's, to Oakland's um, um, website to see what's going on in my neighborhood. But, you know, I know a lot about Albany. The, but, you know, as we, as we go, go through this and, and we wrap up this, this discussion, I think it'd be a good idea for the committee to kind of either kind of provide some, some, um, some, some feedback to staff so that we can move forward and eventually send something back to um, uh, city council for, for them to discuss. Eventually, you know, as we get to some specifics for how to implement this, there probably would be some, some real kind of fact-finding information, like what would it take to create more kiosks on Solano Avenue? What would it take to implement digital signage, you know, at various places? Um, you know, digital signage actually would, you know, is probably one of the easier things to do because, you know, as Jeremiah was mentioning, we we do, I have a connection between our, everything that gets posted to the city website, our bulletin board receives an RSS feed of that information to, to our bulletin board without me having to do anything. So we do have some general information that something is happening with some general, you know, some, the first 30 
you know, with the first 30 words of whatever our post is, that shows up on our bulletin board. And with a $500, you know, Wi-Fi based media player on a screen somewhere, that same information that's on TV or at the community center could be somewhere else. We would just have to figure out, you know, where the screens would go. Um, there's another option of, you know, putting screens in the windows at city facilities that are closed right now. You know, is there a... You know, those those are some logistical issues that aren't insurmountable. But like, how is it easy for somebody to see, you know, coming up to a city, you know, building like how, do, you know, how do we do that? You know, is it putting a screen on a stand or, you know, in front of a window? Is that a stopgap measure until something else happens? But there's there's, a, you know, the committee can determine how we brainstorm and where that brainstorming happens, whether it's through a subcommittee or um um, that gets created tonight, um, or if it's just something that that I, as a staff member, you know, work, you know, um, individually with one of you, um, or perhaps the chair, and the, um, the 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 committee does its own individual outreach to other people to come up with some different ideas. Um, but I think essentially what we'll do tonight is come up with what we're how we're going to do this this initial fact finding, and then bring back something that we can discuss and work on uh, together at the next meeting. Yeah, so that seems, um, I mean, I, it, what are the, what are the rules about communication? Like, uh, like I could communicate, since there's a set, it's a seven member commu committee, I could communicate with, in terms of exchanging ideas or, 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 um, yeah, exchanging ideas, and also we can we can reach out to people in the community that we know for suggestions, right? Like there's no that thing, no Brown Act thingy around that, right? So each of us could come back with ideas, um, give us time to have, come up with some specific ideas, maybe look into the logistics of of those ideas, like. Um, so if maybe um, uh, one suggestion that was doing a survey. Maybe um, staff could work with, um, you know, in this meantime, coming up with work with a committee member or um, a subcommittee of committee members to come up with questions, appropriate questions for a survey. A survey would be something that was easy for us to integrate into our existing kind of, you know, um, uh, digital media communications and get some feedback while the committee reaches out individually to members in person to to gather ideas and then perhaps that becomes an agenda item for the for the next meeting to to bring back all of the different ideas and kind of sort through that so that we have something to, concrete to add to the work plan yeah i mean i think a survey is a great idea just wondering how we it's kind of like a circle, right? A, the chicken and the egg kind of thing. Because yes. if we have a survey, how do we get the people that aren't coming to meetings to fill out a survey if we can't even get them to, you know, like, how are they going to know about the survey in these? I mean, in normal times, I think we could, we could figure out ways of getting it out there. But with this limited social interactions, um, it might be a little bit harder, although we could certainly use, besides the online thing, Naomi, yeah, I think your idea of just talking to people is probably the most realistic thing to do. And that and have other people, you know, and ask them to talk to other people and do a verbal phone tree maybe. Yeah, it seems just like get the get the word of mouth out and I think enough suggestions will filter back that way. Mo certainly more than we're going to get talking to ourselves. Right. And then if we, if I got an idea, if we got ideas, are we allowed to email two of the other people in that we can't email anybody in the committee? I, that's what I'm doing on the Brown part um, of it. Perhaps our city clerk could, could weigh in and give a review on Brown Act communications. Um, everything could be sent to me and okay. I could share with the committee. Um, the, um, but our city clerk could kind of give us a quick review uh, no. Yeah, yeah. What no. Jeremy said is correct. Um, well, Brown Act limits you to not talk to more than a quorum. So that means, well, right now it's a little bit in a weird situation because you don't have the full seven right. members yet. So, you know, 
it, it might get into a situation where right now, perhaps I'm saying, for example, you, you're working with um, um, committee member Kenny and Lux Siegel, but then when the two other, the two other or three other member join, you know, decided to work with the two other people, it becomes kind of like a serial thing. So right now, because you don't have a full committee yet, I think the safest, of course, I can double check with the city attorney, but I believe the safest bet is to send information to the staff liaison and have the staff liaison distribute to all the members. Okay, and thank you. Um, and I, I was thinking that like a, a survey is, is, is challenging right now, Jack, but it, the idea of, of, of us maybe sharing ideas of what we wanna be asking people, sort of a, you know, just like, you know, cause we may not, we may talk to somebody and then later think, oh, I should have asked them that. So maybe if we created something that was just sort of a guideline on the kinds of questions we should be asking people when we do reach out would be like a sort of an informal survey approach. But I think um, I could see me like calling up somebody and asking them and then later thinking, oh, I forgot. And, you know, having to call them back. Oh, I meant to ask you this. So some sort of guidance on the, what kinds of questions we're asking people might be helpful. I think, you know, from the from the experience of CMAC, there's been a number of surveys. It takes a lot. It takes time to come up with how questions are are worded to get the the information that we, that's really going to be useful. So it's certainly not something that we can just you know throw out. You know, you know, you know. We want to put some thought into what those questions are. But I think um, Naomi's suggestion of of doing the word of mouth, you know, in in for for the time being, and then coming coming back, and with with everybody's brainstormed ideas, and then perhaps in that time communicate to the public so that there's more public here in the audience, then they can, you know, people give it get a chance to to add some other contributions that maybe none of us have thought of or heard yet. Um, yeah. I, th I think that would be an important, you know, this is, you know, not everything is going to happen at once, but there's a lot of things that, you know, within a relatively short period of time, I think the committee could move forward on. Yeah, that sounds good. What does everybody think? That's, yeah. I think we yeah. should come up with ideas among ourselves about what we want to ask people so that we, still, we don't start a survey until we know what we're going to ask. So um, I think we have to individually, like Naomi and you were saying, talk to other people about um, you know, how, how they think we should be communicating or get ideas from them and and then incorporate that as into a, maybe a general survey after that. Yeah. But we have to know what the topic is first, what right. we want to ask people. Okay. Um, in terms of forming a committee, what are the steps to do that? Like a subcommittee? Oh yeah, subcommittee. <laughs> um, I think we just form it, right? People just, yeah, you guys can just talk amongst yourself um, um, right here at the meeting and designate, you know, two people, three people as members of the subcommittee. Um, and then go with that. Just bear in mind if, say, the two or three members of the committee is working on an item and you invite members of the public, for example, Jeremiah or Nick Peterson to be part of that. Now, all of a sudden, now that's subject to Brown Act. I see. So it's better if we do the informal no committee thing where we're just talking to people and then gathering ideas and... Well, this, the subcommittee can come up with the details of everything we've kind of talked about tonight. Um, work, you know, with, with, with the staff liaison, which is me, to kind of like format some ideas. And then the, then the subcommittee can meet you know, individually or gather information and then you or whoever the subcommittee is, they could work on that together and then bring bring that back and then do a presentation um, uh, to to the full committee in, in April. Um, but like like our city clerk said, if we start bringing in, there's to, to just to kind of clarify, there's the, 
CMAC, which exists as a city advisory body, if you create a subcommittee, that would be for working towards figuring out what we're going to do and how to bring it back for the committee to discuss. There would be a separate volunteer organization that could be one of the suggestions that involves members of the public doing the work. That's that's kind of there's kind of like three different levels that we'd want to kind of clearly understand that different committee members can be involved individually um, with that volunteer group so long as there's not a quorum present at any of those those activities. Sorry, Jeremy, yes. just clarification that we just clarified today. It doesn't matter how many people from the committee is involved. Mm, thank if you. If the committee member is involved along with the member of the public, it is subject to Brown Act. Thank you. So okay. we can have a one person subcommittee and having, you know, one other person in the public that's helping with this project, it's subject to Brown Act. So how is that like, so there's like a fine line between that and us just reaching out to our friends and saying, what do you think? Like, where is the, you know, what do you think? So yeah, it's different when you're reaching out to people uh, or even reaching out to say, uh, to get an expert advice um, from an expert or if you are just reaching out for feedback versus if you're having um, community uh, members to help you to do the outreach. Okay, okay. So if they are outreached to, we're okay. It's that they are helping us do that. Like, well, okay, right. So we can right. do what we proposed, which is to talk to people. You can, you can talk to people, but say, for example, you wouldn't be out there doing the flyering, for example, right. with the members of the public, if that, the, yeah. the, the activity which you are advising about. Right. Okay. All right. So do we need to form a subcommittee for this, or can we just start with what, like Naomi suggested, which is just go and talk to people first, and then maybe once we have the, we've done all that we get back together and then we could form a subcommittee, I guess, to, I don't know. I just, there's a whole process of, I, I've attended many city council meetings and these subcommittees, sometimes it feels like they, they get in the way of the work. It becomes about process rather than action. I don't know if that's Correct. What you say. Yeah, um, that's, that's the drawback of a uh, um, Brown Act committee or advisory body because everything we do have to be subject to the Brown Act. Mm -hmm. So um, w like, you know, whatever the committee decide, if you wanna form a subcommittee and work on it, but bear in mind, it's just the subcommittee member from here, not involved the member of the public. You can ask for feedbacks or ask for comments, but not involve them in the actual, um, work that you're doing. Or you can have all members going um, to ask the public for feedbacks and then emailing um, staff, then all that idea gets put together for the next agenda item where you guys all talk about it. Okay, thank you. And the vice chair, you had a comment? I was just wondering, and I'll read up on the Brown Act to, to understand me a bit better, but um, if I were to, for example, create a Facebook group, uh, would that be in violation of the Brown Act as committee mem member? I wouldn't be able to um, have any discussion on this elsewhere. Correct, it's safest if you don't discuss any city business on social media. Uh, especially between members of the committee members. Um, and, you know, with your Facebook page, it really depends on, I can double check with the city attorney, but really depends on what you're doing with that Facebook page, group or page, right? If you're just saying, you know, people submit your idea and then leave it at that, right? And then turn it over to the staff, it, I can double check with the city attorney if that is okay. Versus if you are putting out there and you're interacting with the public, 
um, basically having them to help you to work on this outreach effort or getting more comment. It, 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 it's really like Julie said, it's a fine line. So we, we don't want to step <laughs> in the wrong direction or step on the wrong side. Thank you. Okay. And I'll study the brown eye to understand it better. Thank you. But you know, it would, there are several places in Albany on Facebook. There's a, there's a news group, there's the city's page. Um, certainly in your conversations with other people, you can encourage them to, to do that, um, to create you know, a group where you could see what's happening or, you know, around that. Um, and then you know, refer people to city staff you know, for, for more information. Um, but as you know, the, the having having the conversations and working through that, that's you know kind of the catch twenty two of this particular situation. The people who really want to get involved and do things want to be part of advisory bodies, but it's very difficult to do some types of things as a member of an, an advisory body. So, um, with that in mind, it's really up to the committee whether or not um, there's a sub the need for a subcommittee at this time. Um, perhaps that's something that could be postponed till the next meeting. As you know, I th what I'm hearing from the committee members is maybe to do some other, you know, kind of um, in in person, virtual in person, you know, outreach and connection. Maybe in those in those places, uh, news in Albany, the city's site, um, uh, um, your own personal Instagram, Twitter, you know, communities and um, let the people that you know or your neighbors around your block, you know, you know how you know, that personal invite, you know, carries. Um, I was quite, quite happy when I was able to mention during the last um, uh, Climate Action Committee meeting when they were talking uh, about certain issues with the Climate Action Plan, I was able to pass that information on to their staff liaison and, you know, and, and then we have a member here, you know, who's, who's sharing their thoughts and ideas um, with this committee. So, you know, though that little bit of outreach can make a difference. Um, and especially since we have Jeremiah, you know, I'm sure he will um, <laughs> share that information around town. Yes, I'm sure he will. Okay. Um, so what are people's thoughts? Do we want to have a, um, just, just to see if anybody, is everybody comfortable with not having a subcommittee right now? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So let's do that and then just gather ideas however we do that. And I think gathering ideas from people, not just through social media, but asking, like I know that when there were some really important topics coming up at the city council meeting, I would ask my neighbors, you know, did you know this was happening tonight at the city council meeting? And they never knew. They never, never knew. And it's not that they don't have social media and they don't, they just don't paying attention. So, and so I think we really need to be thinking about what not only how people get information, but why would they want it and what would help them want it? Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm really interested in exploring that part of it too. Like how, how can we convince them that they are needed, their voices are needed in the city? Cause right now there's very few people who are attending meetings. Um, Jeremiah and me being two of the main ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I, and I just wanted to point out that the date on the next meeting is the year is wrong. So um, I also I also noticed there just right now that it says seven o'clock. It should be six o'clock there, too. Okay, So it should be 2021 at 6 p.m. And it is April 26th, though. Is that correct? correct. OK. Right. Julie. Yes. Jack. So if I could suggest that each of us, if we're going to be asking people about outreach, that we send that information that we get to Jeremy. And hopefully he can distribute it back to all of us so that we can get a sense of what people are finding out. Yeah, that would be really, that's a great idea. Cause then we could see, we, we, that would really help us see what other people are thinking to ask. We may not have thought of asking or what people right. are thinking about. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Is that okay? And that works for you, Jeremy, you would then collect it. Okay, great. Sounds, that sounds wonderful. All right, so much for an hour meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I read the minutes and I thought, oh, these meetings only got last an hour. This is great. I can have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else that we, there's nothing else on the agenda. We've talked about the next meeting. So, so we have a uh, future agenda items. That's, oh, right. that's, uh, that's I what's forgot. Skipped right over that. So 
I know we've talked about one thing would be talking about um, this, uh, the work plan, including the responsibility of advising and working upon this whole from 6-3, it will bring back our ideas. Any other future agenda items? I think that by in updating the work plan or creating the new work plan for um, 20, was it 20, that's gonna be 21 through 23. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those two items will be, so I will update and and we'll create the new work plan based on this, this work plan, come up with those goals. And this discussion item I think is going to be, you know, certainly an, enough to, for, for the committee. Right, I agree, yeah. Any other items before we go to the public? Um, just a reminder that the work plan is very important to probably accomplish at the next meeting because um, usually the city council look at the work plan um, presented by each advisory body in spring. So, you know, you really only have one meeting Wow. So come prepared with what, what we want to see. Okay. So we should be, that's our other assignment is to just look at the whole work plan, not just this one item. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of ongoing, um, there's, you know, in terms of KLB operations, um, uh, a lot of ongoing things, but um, I'll probably bring some stuff from a staff perspective, you know, some, some various things that, that we have on, on the horizon that, that that I'll bring for the committee to to look at as part of that work plan, but then the committee obviously will kind of come together for how to incorporate this as it relates to the other. Um, a lot of things I heard tonight were about you know youth media and working with youth. Um, so as as that relates to the rest of the work plan, and then some of the other strategic plan, especially engaging our diverse community. I think you know as as we can better define some of those um, uh, tasks or metrics for for what that's going to be for for the committee going forward and what 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 the committee and what council would like to see in terms of our um, either production and or outreach um, uh, along the way great sounds good okay so okay would you be sending us anything along uh, you know that any any thoughts you have about the work plan about your you know from your viewpoint um before the meeting or we would just hear from you at the meeting likely you'd hear from me at the meeting but um i can schedule um and i believe it's okay for me to have individual meetings with uh i certainly will be talking right. with the chair um you know as we come up with the agenda for um as we put together the agenda conversations around that and then i can have individual conversations with with each each one of you perhaps we can schedule you know um over between the next you know month and a half you know we can schedule individual meetings and we can talk great great that sounds good so it won't be just all of a sudden we're mm -hmm. taken unawares by this all this information at the sure. next sounds good all right, um, any other comments about it before we go to the public? All right, how does that? Begin? Okay, all right, so uh, Jeremiah. Thank you. Um, I have a really good point of interest, something we have not discussed this whole night. And of course, it should be a future agenda item. Everybody already knows what I'm gonna say. You just probably haven't realized it yet. <laughs> COVID-19, COVID this pandemic, we should have some sort of community media access about vaccines, about what to do, about this situation we're all living in, and definitely should be a future agenda item, how we could communicate to the public, how we could use our TV station to post Alameda County's um, vaccine order, uh, tier one, tier two, tier B, what we're in right now. I think that would be the most informational thing the public would like to see on our TV station is information about the virus. You know, um, what we could do here in Albany, 
you know, more associated specifically to the city that we live in. Um, what, what is our city council doing about COVID-19 in, in our city? But I think, you know, the next agenda is in, uh, this meeting's in April. So um, I just suggest something to do with COVID-19 pandemic. At least we could have it on the agenda item for discussion on how to engage and how to outreach the community, let public notices, what, you know, what vaccination tier we're on. If any new things come up, you know, a genetic mutation, you know, this one coming from Africa, COVID-19, you know, COVID-21, COVID you know, because we're in 2021 now. So I just want to keep in mind um, the COVID-19 pandemic we're living in and how we could access and outreach the community um, with our media station, our, our Facebook, um, our TV station, you know, even uh, an emergency update, you know, hey, today we're on tier two, tier B, and people could flip on channel 33 and we could say, hey, this is what's going on in Albany. The, the city fire department has, you know, now we're giving vaccines at CVS or now we're giving vaccines, um, you know, behind the fire station, you know, in, in the back door, um, Alta Bates is doing vaccines. But I think a, a future agenda item would be what Albany's doing for the pandemic, for the virus, for the vaccines, for emergency resources regarding COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-2021. I think it's important. Thank you, Jeremiah. Okay. Right. So, um, is that it? <laughs> right. I've never adjourned a meeting, so I just adjourned. Oh, Jack. I move adjournment. <laughs> All right. Second. No, no, ah, we don't that's need how you motion. Do it. We can just adjourn. Oh, we don't have to do it. Oh, okay. that, yeah, that was much more fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we could vote. All, All right. right. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Bob. Have a good night, everybody. Nice having the new people okay. on the committee. Oh, great. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.